The WPF layout control includes a flow layout component, which is essentially a container that can arrange its child controls into rows or columns and allow the flow of controls to be wrapped. The flow is by default wrapped at the container's edge, but it can be customized to use a specific item. Furthermore, items can be maximized and minimized to bring them into focus as well as fill the available area. In this video, we'll take a look at how to use the flow layout control and how to enable maximization on its child controls. So let's get started. I'll start with a new WPF application. From the DevExpress layout control group, I drag and drop a flow layout control onto the design surface. I'll right click, select reset layout and all so the control fills the entire available client area. Now let's add some items to populate the flow layout control. From the toolbox, I'll add a few DevExpress group box controls. You can see the controls are automatically arranged from top to bottom, creating a vertical flow layout. The group boxes are automatically rearranged as the size of the window is changed. Let's customize these group boxes by specifying their width. I'll also set the height property for two of these controls. Notice how the flow layout control repositioned the resized controls to make the best use of the available area. Any of these items can be maximized to cover a larger area of the application window. So for this demo, let's maximize the second group box. To do this, I'll set the maximized element property of the flow layout control to the desired control's name. Using the maximized element position, I can also specify where the maximized control should be displayed. For this example, I'll set it to be maximized and displayed on the right side of the window. Let's run the application and see this in action. Here it is. All the group boxes are displayed and positioned to the left of the maximized control. This provides the end user with a good solid application layout. However, there may be cases where you need the user to be able to maximize and minimize these group boxes based on their needs. This can be easily accomplished by setting a couple of properties on each group box item. Let's return to Visual Studio and see how to do that. I switch to the designer and select the first group box control. From the properties panel, I'll set the maximize element visibility and minimize element visibility properties to visible. I can also manually specify the state of each button, but for this example, we'll leave the properties set to visible. Upon changing those properties, you can see the two new buttons visible on the group's header. I'll go ahead and do this for all the other group box controls. And I'm done. Let's run the application again to see the results. You can see that each group box can be minimized and maximized. I can also collapse them so only the header is visible. Notice that every group box that's maximized is displayed on the right side of the application window. By taking a quick look at the XAML code, you can see the maximized element position property of the flow layout control that was set to right. This can of course be modified to change the location of the maximized group box control. Thanks for watching and of course thank you for choosing DevExpress.